Well, it's a sad day. I mean, they've reached into the hearts of the town and they've ripped them out. And this is, of course, a boardroom betrayal of, of working class Australia. Nobody should pretend that, that governments can intervene and reverse commercial decisions of that kind. In my view, we are facing up to what needs to be done to have a viable business in Newcastle in the future. The announcement rocked the city to the core and when the gates closed for the final time in 1999, NBN's cameras were there. Reporter Helen Kapalos and cameramen Glenn Cook and Michael Rourke compiled a documentary titled The Last Whistle that captured the steelworks' 84-year history. Steel is a commodity. Today's world is built on steel. At Newcastle, we make steel. Fifty years ago, we started here with 1,500 men. Today, there are more than 11,000. We've done more than build the steelworks. We've helped to build a city, the city of Newcastle. The city of Newcastle was literally built from the windfall of the steelworks, and no one recognises that better than the men and women who worked there. They are and will always remain part of the history which secured the livelihood of thousands. They know firsthand that the nuts and bolts of the plant was its people. When the, they said about the closure, oh, gee, you, know, you just don't believe it. The BHP was always there, but all of a sudden it's not going to be there. And it's just, to those that have worked there all their life, it's just... It doesn't seem right. Aubrey Brooks worked at the steelworks for 38 years, following in the footsteps of his father and grandfather. The saddest day of my life when that place shut because, Paul, I'm a people person. Um, I still do tours to the BHP muster point, um, and the people really suffered. At its peak, during the 50s and 60s, the steelworks employed more than 11,000 workers. You only had to have a look um, on a payday when, you, when they knocked off work. There was that many push bikes, it was just unreal. It was hardly a motor cars. On the day shift, when the whistle blew at four o'clock, the amount of people that streamed down that road to, to clock off, and everybody had, knew the quickest way away from the place. And it's really sad because, you know, we don't even get the apprenticeships that we had in those days. You know, the apprenticeships were five years long. You know, moulders, carpenters, you know, fitters, turners, boilermakers, electricians, moulders, you know, um, everything was taught at the BHP. We had our own chaplain, our own medical centre. It was a city within a city. They could fix any of your problems in there, personal and all. By the late 90s, only 2,000 workers remained and the company paid to retrain them in a bid to find new work in other fields. The former workers still hold annual reunions and are preparing for their latest get-together this weekend. It's the 13th year reunion and uh, it's, it's at a new venue this year, Paul. It's at the Newcastle District Tennis Club on Saturday the 22nd of this month, starting at 12.30. I've ordered all the food, wine for the ladies, and uh, some cold drinks for the boys and we'll kick off from there and hope we get the men and women are still there.